Hi, I'm AJ and thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. If you're not a current subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the like button because you're gonna like this video. And also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Recently, I made a blog post called The Simple Guide to a Tax-Free Year. Basically, what I wanted to know, is it possible for anyone to live a tax-free year? And if so, how is that possible? And whether or not you're getting a tax refund or you're paying taxes at the end of the year, they both have similar issues. Basically with both, it's a function of how much income you have, what tax deductions are available to you, and what tax credits are available to you. And in addition, with your W-4, you can then decide how much tax is actually going to be taken out of your check, whether you're paid weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. And all of this adds up with the IRS telling you how much money you owe at the end of the year or how much money you're going to get as a refund at the end of the year. So knowing that those are the main factors, your income, your tax deductions and your tax credits, as well as how much tax you actually pay, I figured there must be a simple way to figure out a roundabout number to get us as close to zero as possible or to where we're only getting a small refund or a very small tax bill at the end of the year. First, let's talk about why getting this number as close to zero is important in the first place. If you're a person that receives a tax refund every year, this means that you've paid more in taxes than you were supposed to you've overpaid the amount of taxes that the IRS, based on your income, based on your available tax deductions, based on your available tax credits, then you should have paid, which means the government is now paying you back for the money that you loaned them interest-free. Now, instead of loaning the government interest-free, what you could do is you could invest that money throughout the year. You could put that money in a savings account throughout the year, or you could pay down debt throughout the year because this is money that you're gonna get and that you didn't have to give out of your paycheck every week or by every two weeks. While talking about this, I just want you to remember that this is the key thing. When you get a tax refund, that means you overpaid your taxes. When you have to pay taxes, that means you did not pay enough taxes. It's as simple as that. Now in my blog post, if you want to get into the gritty details, make sure you check that out at ajmobilemoney.com. The blog post is called A Simple Guide to a Tax-Free Year. Is it possible? What is your target taxable income? So I'll talk about what target taxable income means. So the target taxable income, we'll call it TTI for short. This is the amount of money that you want to target for the government to actually recognize as your taxable income. So you have your taxable income, which is the amount of income that you have coming in. And then you have your tax deductions, like the standard deduction, and you have tax credits like the child tax credit, for example. And those are the two that I'm gonna use in this video. So you take your total income, and then you take any deductions that you have, and then that gives you your taxable income. So the example I used in the blog is with the standard deduction for a family, and I'm using the example of a family of four. So you have the two working adults, you have two children, and that is your family of four. And based on these working adults, you take their income, you take the standard deduction, which for 2019, it's $24,400, and you subtract that from your total income, and that gives you your taxable income. Now, this doesn't count any other deductions that you may have. This doesn't count any tax credits because there's a big difference between a tax deduction and a tax credit. With a tax deduction, what you're doing is you're lowering your taxable income. Whatever your taxable income was, you didn't subtract any tax deductions that you have from your total income, and that brings you down to your taxable income. Versus with a tax credit, what you're doing is, once you've already determined what your taxable income is, and based on the tax bracket that you fall in with that income, you then have what you owe in taxes. Now that you know what your actual taxes are gonna be, you didn't take any tax credits that you have and you apply that directly to your tax bill. So for instance, let's say you owe $10,000 in taxes based on your taxable income. You didn't have $4,000 worth of tax credits. That $4,000 is applied directly to the $10,000 that you should owe in taxes. And now you technically only owe $6,000 in taxes. So if you actually pay $10,000 worth of taxes throughout the year, this means at the end of the year, once you get those tax credits, you're gonna get a $4,000 refund because you've already paid $10,000. With those tax credits, you really only owed 6,000. And so you're gonna get that $4,000 refund at the end of the year. So what this experiment and what this blog post is all about 
is trying to figure out what you can actually do so that you don't get that $4,000 refund. So we're gonna use the Jackson family as an example. The Jacksons are a married couple, they're filing a joint tax return, and they have two children. Now they have a very simple tax return. They just have their W-2 income and they have their two children. So they qualify for the child tax credit. And with that child tax credit, they get $2,000 per child, which gives them a total of $4,000 in tax credits. Now working backwards, we're gonna find out based on those simple two tax credits and based on the standard deduction, how much income they can actually have without paying any taxes. So working backwards, we know that they have a $4,000 tax credit. That means they have $4,000 that they should pay in taxes that they don't have to because of this credit. Now let's look at the first tax bracket, which is the 10% tax bracket. Any income made between $0 and $19,400 will be taxed at a 10% rate, which means they'll have a $1,940 tax bill. We subtract the $1,940 from the $4,000 in tax credits. That leaves us with $2,060 in taxes. That $2,060 is taxed at a 12% tax bracket because it is based on the income that you made above $19,400. Now we're gonna work backwards to calculate how much income that actually is. So you take the $2,060, you divide that by 0.12, which is the 12%, and that gives you an income of $17,166.66, which was actually taxed. We now add back the income from the first tax bracket, which is $19,400. We add that to the $17,166.66, and we now have a taxable income of $36,566.66. Now that we have the target taxable income, or the TTI, of $36,566, we actually haven't finished because we haven't even considered the standard deduction. Because they're married filing jointly, they qualify for the standard deduction of 24,400. This means that you can now add that $24,400 to our TTI. And once you add those numbers together, what you have is the PSDI, which is the pre-standard deduction income of $60,956.66. This is the actual W-2 income that you can have without paying any federal taxes. Now this doesn't take into account any other special tax situations that you may have. This doesn't take into account any state tax if you live in a state that charges state tax. This is purely federal tax based on the standard deduction and based on the two tax credits that you have with the child tax credit. This is also the level of income that you would live off of. So you're actually receiving this $60,000 this is what you use to pay your day-to-day -day expenses, your rent or your mortgage, food, clothing, anything else that you buy, you can use this money and this is tax-free money that you earn based on the tax deductions and tax credits that we mentioned for the Jackson family. Now, what if you make more than the $60,000 of this PSDI? Using the example that I use in the blog, this family actually made the very maximum that you can make in that 12% tax bracket of $78,950. So if you were in the same situation as the Jackson family, what you would have to do to bring your $78,000 down to a $60,000 income would be to either find additional tax deductions that work for your family, any additional tax credits that you qualify for, or to put that money into retirement account. So if you were to put that extra $17,000, $18,000 that you would need to lower your taxable income to, you can put that money into an HSA. As a family, you qualify for $7,000 or the Jackson family qualifies for $7,000. And as individuals, the Jackson parents, they can both put up to $19,000 in their 401k or up to $6,000 in their IRA. I would first put the minimum amount possible to maximize my 401k match. So if my company is matching 4%, I'll put 4% of my income and then whatever that dollar amount is, that will count towards the 17 to $18,000 that I need to bring our taxable income as a Jackson family down to $60,000. As I mentioned in a previous video about why I max out my HSA first, make sure you check out that video if you haven't seen it. Then I would maximize my HSA, that will give me another $7,000 and then any additional funds that I would need to get to that $17,000, I would put that into either more money into the 401k or put money into the IRA for both of the Jackson parents. So you're saying, AJ, hey, I make more than $78,000. Okay, let's say you make $100,000 as a family. 
if as a family you make $100,000, then that means you need to reduce your taxable income by $40,000. Now this is still possible because like I mentioned, with the HSA, that's $7,000 as a family that you can put in. With the 401k, as individuals, both of you can put $19,000 towards your 401k. So that's almost $40,000 by itself. That's $38,000 if you were to both max out your 401k. So that combined with maxing out your HSA at $7,000 and maxing out your IRAs where you both can put $6,000, that's a total of $57,000 that the Jackson family or the Jackson parents specifically can put towards their retirement accounts and that money doesn't count towards their taxable income. Now, what makes this more important is that any funds over that $78,950 is taxed at a 22% rate. So in order to get down to that 12% tax bracket, a family that's making $100,000, they need to put $21,050 towards their retirement in order for those funds to not be taxed at that 22% rate. Now, if instead you decided, you know what, I don't wanna put any money towards my retirement, I'd rather have that $21,000 to myself and to our family so that we can spend it. If you were to actually take that $21,000 as income, you wouldn't actually be able to spend the whole 21,000. What you would have is about $16,400 because $4,600 of that, which is 22% of that 21,000, you would actually owe in taxes. So unless you had any other tax credits or any other tax deductions that you could use, that $21,000, you would only be able to spend $16,000 of it. So not only are you putting $21,000 towards your retirement, you're also saving yourself $4,600 in taxes. So depending on what it costs for you to actually live, if you can't afford to live on $60,000 as a family of four, then any other money above that amount, you would actually be taxed at first a 12% rate for any funds between 60,000 and 78,950. And then any money over that would be taxed at a 22% rate. So even if you do need a little extra money, more than that $60,000, what you can do is at least lower your taxable income to that $78,950 and you won't be taxed at a 22% tax rate. So if you found this video helpful or you found it interesting, I actually go into more detail on the blog post where I talk about the gritty details, all of the individual numbers and the max total income that you could possibly make. Once you include just the standard deduction, your tax credits based on how many children you have, plus maximizing all of your pre-tax retirement accounts. I'll have a link in the description as well so you can see that Excel sheet, that Google sheet that has those numbers. And this is based solely on people that are married filing jointly using the standard deduction and using the child tax credit. So make sure you check that out. Hopefully soon I'll update that to have a separate tab where you can actually look for people that are single, that have no kids, and also single that have children and how much income you can make and live tax-free without paying that money in taxes so that you can use those additional funds to pay down debt throughout the year, put money towards savings or put money towards retirement or just invest that money in a normal taxable account. So after you check out that blog, make sure you leave a comment, not only in this video, but also on that blog post. And if you like the blog and if you like the videos that I make, make sure you subscribe to my blog as well. I'll send out email updates so that once I post a new blog, you'll get those updates. You can also check out my Instagram at AJ Mobile Money. I make updates on my IG for any blog post or any YouTube videos that I make or any other nuggets that I like to share with my followers. All right, thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate you taking this time out of your day. If you're not a current subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the like button because you really like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Again, thanks for watching. You guys have a great day. Thank you.